thank you very much. Hello, lifters. Um, so I will speak about innovation and product life cycle. It will be uh, quite intense on those five minutes, so please bear it with me. We all know that innovation goes fast. Good ideas generally burst in one second. We also know that product life cycle generally dictates the tempo of all R&D-based industries. As it will be said and has been said over and over during those two uplifting days, current convergence, alternative energies, clean cars, fair financial models, all the things we need to save the day were already there yesterday. My thesis today is that short-term financial vision of the product life cycle dooms innovation and slow the mass market adoption of new technologies. I will advocate today for a long-term strategy to build new markets, a strategy where the concept of product life cycle, managed product by product, is actually replaced by a larger vision of the industrial life cycles that reflects the fact that various products, various technologies are milestones along the same road, steps on the same stairway. Swiss dairy farmers say no different thing when they say that if you keep milking the same cow forever, you won't stay long a producer of cheese and chocolate. Having a wider scope, focusing on the full livestock instead of looking at just one single individual cow is certainly a key to farmer sustainability. No, I want to share two visions with you. Looking, uh, looking back on the failure of mobile content services by operators and looking ahead on the necessary move that media must make towards a next industrial life cycle. In 1999, mobile companies had two major announcements, WAP and 3G. With WAP, they were, in theory, selling full mobile internet access directly in your pocket. But they were actually providing a slower, hardly working, serviceless version of the French Minitel of the 80s. Delco really st still paid this communication mistake today, although they repeated it with 3G a few years later. Indeed, when operators finally launched 3G in 2004, the whole communication underlined the technical aspect, but nothing, nothing was said about services. The pipe was incredible, but no one thought that the pipe should contain something. Consumer perfectly understood the message. I actually forgot my slides. Um, per consumer perfectly understood the message. They did not care at all about that new technology. Indeed, most people don't care at all about technology. Technology must be invisible. If they care, if you had to be able to understand how a car works to drive it, there would be no pollution problem today. As companies wait the very light stage of the product life cycle to introduce the next generation, they are not allocating a sufficient time for the necessary services ecosystem to emerge. They then enter a terrible vicious circle of overselling technologies, providing no services with no added value. Early adopters then spread the word negatively and engage a truly destructive buzz on the novelty. You don't get back on the ring after that. Media face a similar problem today at the other end of the pipe. Although their product, the content, stays, stays king in the new millennium, the life cycle they have been living in is now over. Indeed, media are facing the biggest paradigm shift since Gutenberg. Not all of them are getting it, but they should. Indeed, non-changing media will not disappear tomorrow early morning, but they surely will, as surely as electricity did replace steam. Media face so, um, sorry, those traditional media are often wailing about their terrible situation, but they remind me, as a media guy, of a hungry person dying from hunger because he doesn't make the effort to pick up the food that's on the ground. The media industry is supposed to be a sector of smart, curious people asking questions, finding answers. It's just a shame that they never question their own status, their own fear of power loss, and their own practices. If they did, they would definitely have found answers. They can surely implement those new logic and strategy as we at all the content in a rather small and independent media company, Chini the Bone and Bread, we have been doing it since 2001. Porting their product in the life cycle should involve three things. First, be multimedia. All content should always benefit of a fully multimedia production process. All print journalists should tape their interview on video or at least have an audio file and take some picture. All the TV companies should be able to derive text, steal pics, and audio tracks from their audiovisual product. 
Second, be digital. Newsroom should be really digital and built as an electronic workflow where the traditional hierarchy is translated into passive validation with nods of decision. With their current resources, doing so will both create the tool and the intellectual incentive within the staff to provide the various cross-media streams of communication that they need to provide to their customer. Three, be rational. On the economic side, media brands should really concentrate their resource on their specialization, on the added value they're actually bringing to their core target group. To avoid the re reinvention of the wheel on a daily basis would lead them to focus on their USP instead of spending 40 to 70% of their budget in telling the exact same story that their neighbor and competitor. Well, I have five minutes today. and. Uh, that's it for today, and I leave the conclusion to you. Invite you to all to see a larger, largely larger version of my speech online in the vision section of our site, allthecontent.com. And uh, I would be more than happy to discuss any of those subjects today during those next two days or any time if you contact me with the following details. Thank you.